Today on The Hookup, we're gonna set up an Amazon Dash button with Home Assistant to remind us to take our vitamins or prescription medicine first thing in the morning. And the best part is, it only takes about 15 minutes to set up and it doesn't cost a penny. At the ripe old age of 35, my love for orange juice and spicy food caught up with me. And I was battling a case of chronic heartburn. I took a quick trip to the doc and she prescribed me a 30 day course of medication to get it under control. The medication works best when it's taken on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. Sounds easy enough. Too bad I'm terrible at remembering things first thing in the morning. The idea here is simple. When I come downstairs in the morning to kiss my daughter and wife goodbye before they leave for school, I'll come over, take my pill, and then press the Amazon Dash button. If I press the Dash button, it will deactivate the Medicine Reminder Input Boolean. And if I don't remember to take the pill, the reminder will stay on, and after 30 minutes, it'll send me a notification on my phone to remember to take my pill before I leave for work. Simple concept, simple implementation. Step one order an Amazon Dash button. I mentioned that this thing didn't cost me a thing, and ultimately, it didn't. Amazon has a deal where if you buy a Dash button for $4.99, then they'll give you a $4.99 credit when you make a purchase with that Dash button. I needed some AAA batteries anyways, so I ordered a Dash button for AAA batteries. A day later, the Dash button showed up on my doorstep. To set it up, you open up your Amazon app, and you hit the hamburger icon, and then click on your account. Scroll down to Dash Buttons and Devices, and then set up a new device. Follow the on-screen prompts to get your Dash Button hooked up to your home Wi-Fi, and then choose the product you want your $4.99 discount on. Click on Finish, and then press the button to order that item. Next, you'll disconnect your Dash Button from your Amazon app, and then hold down the Dash Button for 6 seconds until the light flashes. Next, you'll go into the Wi-Fi of your phone or computer, and connect to the Amazon Configure Me Wi-Fi access point. Once you're connected, you'll navigate to 192.168.0.1 to see your device's information. The important piece of information here is the MAC address. Copy it down exactly. You'll need this to set up your Dash button in Home Assistant later on. After you grab the MAC address, go ahead and repeat the setup process in your Amazon app, same as before, but this time, don't select an item to buy. Just exit the setup process once you get to that step. To make sure you did everything correctly, press the Dash button and you should get a notification in your Amazon app that says you need to finish the setup process. That means it won't be ordering something every time you press the button. Before exiting the app, go into your Dash button notification settings and turn every option off. That will prevent you from getting that setup notification every time you press the button. Next, we'll add our Dash button to Home Assistant. As you might know, I'm running the Hass.io version or Hass.io version of Home Assistant. So I'm gonna use the Dash button add-on called Dash.io made by Danny MTB. Copy the link for Danny MTB's GitHub repository from the description below and add it as a custom repository in your Hass.io add-on store. Scroll down to Dash.io in that new repository and hit install. While I'm waiting for it to install, I'm gonna add an input boolean to Home Assistant called Rob Medicine Reminder and hit save. I'll need to restart Home Assistant to finish adding it, but I'll wait until after Dash.io is finished installing to do that. Now that Dash.io is installed, we'll need to update the configuration file in the add-on for our new button. Under name, you'll put something descriptive for your Dash button. I'm gonna call this one Medicine. Under address, you're gonna paste in the MAC address that you copied earlier. MAC addresses are in hexadecimal, so you'll need to add colons every two characters. For domain, you'll decide what you want to control in Home Assistant. This could be any domain that's available under the Services tab in Home Assistant. For me, to make my automation writing easier, I'm gonna use an input boolean. The service that I want my dash button to perform is turn off, and under service data, I'm gonna to need to put in the specific entity ID for the input boolean that I want to turn off. There's a little bit of weirdness that happens here since you actually need to type out quotation marks within a JSON file. And to do this, instead of just typing quotation marks, you actually type backslash quotation mark instead of just the plain quotation mark. If you're unsure about how to get your JSON properly formatted, you can just copy my configuration from down in the description and change your input Boolean name. The last option is the timeout option at the top. The timeout value limits how often each dash button can activate a service in Home Assistant. 
A value of 20 will allow that dash button to turn my input boolean off once every 20 seconds. For my purposes, this is just fine. But if you're going to use this for something like a light switch, you probably want to change this to a lower number. If you make it too low, you may find that a single button press activates the service multiple times. Now that everything is configured, I'm going to hit save, and then I'll reboot Home Assistant to finish adding that input boolean from earlier. While I wait for Home Assistant to restart, I'm going to plug one of my other videos. I pretty much never worry about messing with my Home Assistant configuration because I've got it set up to back up to my Dropbox every Monday, so I can easily just roll back the changes that I make if I ever screw anything up. A major complaint that I hear from Hass.io users is how long it takes to reboot Home Assistant. In that same video, I show you how to set up the recorder component so that your database file doesn't get massive. By keeping the database small, you'll significantly decrease the time it takes for your Hass.io instance to restart. My database file is around 12.5 megabytes, and consequently, it takes me only around 90 seconds from when I press the restart button in Home Assistant to when I can access my dashboard again. And I'm running a Raspberry Pi Model B. Now that Home Assistant is restarted, let's go ahead and test out our new button. I'll toggle my input boolean on via the dashboard, and then I'll press my dash button to turn it off. It takes about one to two seconds for the boolean to respond, which is more than fine for my purposes, but it might be a little annoying if you're using it to turn on a light. I'm gonna set up a simple node red automation to handle the alerts. At 6.45 a.m. on weekdays and 8.45 a.m. on weekends, I'll start this 30 minute delay trigger node. If at any time I hit the dash button or turn off the boolean in Home Assistant, it will cancel the trigger node and prevent a notification from being sent. But if I don't press the button at 7.15 a.m. on weekdays or 9.15 on weekends, it will send me a notification on my phone to remind me to take my meds. If you're interested in doing the same thing, I've exported this node red flow and I put it in the description below. But this automation is really simple. It's too simple and it's not the actual automation that I use. In next week's video, I'm gonna walk you through the automation that I actually use, which sends me an actionable notification on my iPhone that allows me to snooze the timer for five minutes in case I'm not downstairs yet, toggle the Boolean off if I already took my meds but I didn't remember to press the button, or my personal favorite, it allows me to send another reminder notification once I return home in case I've already left for work without taking my pill. Next week's video will also include some other cool tips and tricks about using Node-RED in your automations that will open up a world of possibilities for you. This video was specifically about setting up a dash button with the Hass.io version of Home Assistant. It's absolutely possible to do this on all other types of Home Assistant, but the process will be slightly different. Burns HA has a video about setting up dash buttons on a traditional Linux Home Assistant setup, so you can check that one out if you're still resisting Hass.io. Thank you to my patrons for your continued support of my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel without costing you a thing, I've put affiliate links for the Amazon Dash button down in the description. Using those links not only benefits my channel, but like I said, it's totally free. If you run into problems while you're doing this project, leave a comment, and I'll do my best to help you out as much as I can. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.